Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur. My name is Sean Walchef, founder of Cali BBQ and Cali BBQ Media. In life, in the restaurant business, and in the new creator economy, we learn through lessons and stories. We are grateful to Toast, our primary technology partner at our restaurants, and also for letting us host this show here today after our customer advisory board meetings. We are actually filming at Toast headquarters in Boston, and I am here with Joy Zaremka, who is the COO of Bus Boys and Poets. Joy, it's an honor to have you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Really excited I've, to be here. I've been waiting for this. Uh, I absolutely love your restaurant group, what you guys are building. This is why we created this show, and we're so grateful that Toast believes in storytelling um, so that we can share these stories with our incredible audience. Where in the world is your favorite stadium, stage, or venue? So does it matter if it's dead or alive? Because, no. okay, my favorite stadium then is dead. Um, it's Three Rivers Stadium, which okay. used to be in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's where the Steelers played. It's where the Pirates played. And I grew up uh, in the city of champions uh, back in the 70s and 80s when our sports were amazing. Yes. So that's my stadium. So we're going to go to Three Rivers. We're going to talk to Toast. And as these spark events get bigger and bigger, yes. We are going to bring back Three River Stadium. Right, I love it. We're going it. to talk to Entrepreneur. We'll get some other sponsors involved. But more importantly, we like to pe bring people on that are playing the game within the game. The audience that listens to this show, hospitality professionals from all over the world, different backgrounds, mm -hmm. what we believe is in story. And I want to bring you to the 50-yard line. Okay. And I'm going to give you a mic. And I'm going to say, Joy, please share the Busboy and Poets story with us. All right. Yeah, no, I'd love to. Um, well, the busboys and poet story starts actually with Langston Hughes, who was both a busboy and a poet. Um, he was in Washington, D.C. in the 1920s, um, working as a busboy before he became a renowned poet. Um, and so Andy Shalal, who is the founder of Busboys and Poets, um, was a big fan and really wanted to make a, a, a really, really sort of warm, inviting place for everyone. So whereas most restaurants are like, we're going to do this particular thing for particular people, his idea was like, let's make the biggest, most broadest of restaurants. So it is a community gathering place. It is a restaurant. It is a bar. It is an event space. It is a bookstore. It is an art gallery. It is, you know, so many things and, um, you know, it has a huge menu and the whole idea is we want everybody to feel comfortable. We want everybody to feel welcome. We want it to be an inclusive space um, and we want voices that usually aren't seen um, to actually be heard in there. So there's a social justice element to it as well. So a lot going on, but, um, but a lot of fun, if you can imagine. Should I say more? Deliberate pause. Oh, okay. It's part of your mission. Ah, I see you're deliberately pausing. I'm so sorry. I didn't get it. <laughs> that was a deliberate You need pause. to explain it to me. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So our tribal <laughs> statement talks about wanting people to take a deliberate pause. Um, you know, lots of restaurants are like trying to turn tables and kick people out. We want people to sit and relax, grab a book, you know, grab a drink, um, take in a show, you know, learn some poetry, uh, look, at the, look at the artwork, hang out with your friends. Um, we are one of those places where we actually don't kick people out when they've been there too long. Um, some people have written their, their novel or their, you know, PhD dissertation. Um, I actually wrote some of my book in Busboys before I actually wor worked at Busboys. That's the kind of space that we're trying to create. Um, we have lots of tables, but we also have couches because um, we want people to come in and just relax, take that deliberate pause that you took. <laughs> it's hard to do on a podcast. Right. But when I saw it, I had to do it because right. it's it goes to why I love the idea of this show, the idea that we get to connect with community, right. the idea that it's always been bigger than a restaurant for me. That's why I love the yes. brand that you guys have built is it's so much more than food. Right. Exactly. Food is the breaking of bread. It's not the transaction that we're talking about. It's right. the real building of community. And you said you wrote your book, you started your book before you even worked there. Right, right. Bring me back to there. Yeah. I mean, what is so crazy, there's a couple of like, you know, kind of coincidences that ended up happening. Um, so I would, you know, go to Busboys and just you know, drink coffee and write. 
Um, and then when my book finally came out, um, and just to go back, I wrote a book where I traveled around the world. I interviewed people who had one white parent and one black parent, using definitions of race from America, and just seeing like the racial twilight zone that you know the world is, right? So I wrote a book called The Pigment of Your Imagination, um, and I launched it at Busboys. So, wow. <laughs> so Busboys opened in 2005. I, um, I had, my book comes out in 2007, and I launch it there, right? Um, knowing, of course, that this is a great space to be in and just, you know, cool, funky people are in there. It's just like, you just feel good, you know? Um, and it wasn't until a couple years after that, um, I was actually on the campaign for Andy when he ran for mayor of uh, Washington, D.C., hung out with him again, obviously in Busboys quite a bit. And I remember around that time, I walked into their office and I was like, oh, this is a great office. I'd love to work for this company one day. Sort of just in the back of my head. Did you ever worked in restaurants before? Not really. I mean, I did. I, you know, I waited tables um, in college. Yeah. Um, I ran a burger joint, you know, by myself. So I knew how to cook, quote unquote. Um, but, you know, I wasn't like knee knee deep in uh, the restaurant world. Um, I had worked at a Chinese restaurant where most people who came in were actually Chinese. So like a proper sit down Chinese restaurant. Um, and I don't speak Cantonese or Mandarin. So um, people would order with numbers, right? Like they all had yes. numbers. And so they tell me the number and I'd run the number back <laughs> to the kitchen. And that's pretty much like all I could do was, you know, go back and forth with the numbers. Um, and I was amazed quite frankly that you could actually communicate with people even speaking a different language but that's the power of food right you know yes. like I could still be in that space feel comfortable and, and connect people so anyway did that went to college went on to grad school like I said wrote this book um, hung out with Andy again and I said wow you know really love the concept really love this guy and what he's done um, and would love to be a part of it so um, 2014 I joined uh, Busboys been there ever since and um, I hate what did to he hire you for um, I originally Did came on. Did create a position for you? Well, yeah, I think I originally, <laughs> the first day I think I was in events and like the second day I was a VP. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it was just, you know, after talking and, you know, talking vision and I was trying to figure out what are you trying to do here? Like what, what is the actual vision? Because my feeling is it's great, but we need to do this more places, yes. like more neighborhoods need to have this wonderful space. So my whole job is around scalability. It's all about how do we bring this to other places. Um, quite honestly, sometimes Andy's like, well, we're not making money here, but we're getting people jobs and yes. we're getting people this space. So let's just keep going. You know, meanwhile, I'm over here saying like, the numbers are not adding yeah. up. Like, you know, let's cut ties. But, um, you know, the real idea is like world domination. Like there yes. should be a wonderful, warm, inviting, inclusive space in every neighborhood. Um, so we tend to go to places that ask for us, um, people who want us to be there so that we're giving them what they need and you know like so many of the people who come on your podcast we're all about community right yes we're trying to make that connection it's it's so fascinating when you think of the micro community that needs to be created in order for the macro community to take notice how how many locations do you guys have now we have nine nine full service restaurants wow now. that's yeah. a lot of how many employees um about uh, a thousand a thousand employees. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. So all of these events, so you have micro events happening in essentially nine villages. Right. Whether they're in a city, metropolitan area, exactly. no matter where you are, we all operate really in a village. Right. You know, we are creatures of habit and you hope that people's habits in that village are good enough to sustain a business exactly. that can grow. When you look at the growth since you've been there and you look five years into the future, what do you see? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting when I got there, I think we were four um, locations. So, you know, we've more than doubled. Um, and interestingly, when I got there, I met not only with Andy, I met with his children. And I said, well, how many locations do you want? Because, you know, if we're going to really build something, yeah. I need to hear not what this generation is thinking, but what's the next generation thinking? Um, and so I named the first, um, you know, our first location is number 300. And the next one is called 299. And then, t and I'm counting down. And I'm wow. going to, I'm going to retire, hopefully, if, <laughs> wow. but when we get to one, right? That's the number that That's we came amazing. up with. Yeah. How did you so, come up with 300? Well, just talking to Andy's daughter uh, in particular, when I was saying, well, when you think about busboys, you think about what it could be, how big do you want to see it? 
Um, and right now I'm spending a lot of time thinking, how do we grow this? How do we make it, you know, be something that could show up anywhere and still have that same authentic feeling um, and to create, you know, a new village somewhere else. Huge news, Toast, our primary technology partner at our barbecue restaurants in San Diego and the primary technology partner of so many of the guests that we have on this show have announced they are expanding their business offerings with Google. So now if you search on Google Maps and you sign up for Toast Tables or Toast Waitlist, you will have the opportunity to improve the digital hospitality experience of the guest, allow them to book through the maps into the Toast Reservation system. One of the biggest difficulties that restaurant guests have is when they search for your restaurant and they want a table, they do not have an easy solution to book a table or to get on a wait list. This is huge news for the restaurant industry, huge news for guests and huge news for you, the restaurant owner. Check out Toast Tables today and find out the new integrated solution that they have. This is something that we've wanted for a long time. How do you integrate reservations, wait lists into your point of sale? Toast has done it, check it out. One of the things that fascinated me is the YouTube channel. Mm. You have incredible success a long time ago on the YouTube channel. What do we need to do to convince right. you to relaunch and put a little bit of a little bit of magic? Because yeah. the whole world is a stage. Shakespeare taught us that. Right. And what you've done is you've created a safe space for creatives to come and share their gifts. Yeah. Whether they're writers, whether they're artists, whether they're poets. Exactly. You give them that stage. You give them the venue. Yeah. No, I mean, there. to be honest, sometimes we want to be you, right? We want to make a sort of media space yes. that would we could really just broadcast all over the place. Um, we haven't, as you know, like really honed in on that, um, but we, we could and should. Uh, we got into social media kind of early on um, and allowed us to really build a great following in various places. But I do think you're right. That's, you know, that's a low hanging fruit that we probably yeah. should pick a little bit more. I'm, I can't wait to see what you do because you, most restaurants struggle to create content beyond the dish. Right. You already have the content that you're just literally the stage. Right. You're helping broadcast and, you know, helping a, a new artist get discovered. Right. Yeah. I mean, and, and if you think about it, like we should be able to ship that content anywhere, right? Yes. Not only through the YouTube channel, but like even the artwork on the wall, right? Yeah, if you decide you want to buy the artwork or you see something, we should be able to just take it off the wall and, you know, ship that too, right? There's nothing that should really get in the way of spreading art, politics, you know, like the, um, the engagement that we get is something that I think you're right. We could really be building on even more. Yeah, I think one of the things that we're so focused with on this show, why we're so grateful to have the opportunity is there's four C's that where the intersection of technology meets, and that's content, commerce, communication, and community. Yeah. All four of those C's live in harmony with one another. Right. And how do we focus on those things? Community we've talked about. Yeah. Commerce is something that you can't have a business right. if you're not selling anything. Right. Content we have, yeah. right? and communication. It's the communication with the guests, it's communication with the staff. How did you find yourself sitting in a position where Toast, the most important technology right. partner in the restaurant hospitality space, is asking you to come sit on the customer advisory board? Yeah, no, that that is a great question. Um, and I, I love like I love my Toast story because it's a, it's a story of failure, to be super honest. Um, I get to Busboys and I say, look, I think this legacy POS sucks. And saying that back in like, you know, <laughs> five, six, seven years ago yeah. was like the worst thing in the world. Absolutely. Like people could not believe it. Like you don't know what you're talking Correct. about. And I'm sitting here going, this thing is hardly working for us. You know, <laughs> like I get it. We've had it for, you know, you know more than a decade, yeah. but it's not best in breed anymore. Um, and so I stumbled upon Toast probably around um, 2016. Um, and I started talking about it and nobody would listen to me and everybody shut me down. And around 2018, we get on the platform 
and it fucking crashes. <laughs> like it does not work at all. Brutal. <laughs> we are moving. How many restaurants did we you had launch? S- I think seven at that you had time. Seven restaurants yeah. all launch on uh, toast. Or well, did you do you roll it out? Rolled it slowly, <laughs> but it didn't matter if the one was crashing when the new one was coming on. Oh no! What what had basically happened? We we're a full service restaurant, and at the time, um, the the screens couldn't hold more than like a hundred orders at one time, yes. which is a couple of hours, right? Yeah. Um, we just had to go in there and change a setting. Like most things in Toast, you just got to change a setting and it's fixed, right? But at the time, we did not know that. Uh. And all we knew was this new thing that I put in was not working. <laughs> so, you had the target on your back. Right. My job is Joy did line. it. <laughs> exactly. So I became Everything a, was fine until Joy put this in here. Right. I had to become a Toast expert really, really quickly yeah. because everything was coming back to me, every problem that was happening. Um, And so eventually figured out what the problem was. Eventually, you know, crashes stopped. Um, And eventually the world adopted Toast, right? Yes. So I'm fast forwarding. I'm now a fucking hero. Yes. Right? Like I picked this great, (laughs) you (laughs) you know, tech forward, amazing company. um, And I get all the credit for it now. So, and it's funny because like all the chief technology officer. Right, exactly. (laughs) All of a sudden. (laughs) All of a sudden I am a genius. Yes. Um, People go out and they're like, you're not going to believe what I saw today. Another you know, restaurant has gone to toast. And I'm yes. Like, hmm. So you don't say, you know, so. But what really brings me here is, you know, figuring out how to fix toast, like how to make it better, better. Who can we talk to? Who can come up with something, you know, that we thought about that they didn't think about yet? Who can we talk to? And so, you know, qu- quite honestly, constantly complaining or just asking, what about this? What about that? I think leads me to being here today um, because just building toast is so amazing because it allows you to kind of build with them yes you know like uh i would say you know it'd be great if it did this and like two months later it would do this you know and do that and it would just um just being that tech forward was you know was incredible i never doubted that toast was going to be great for us it was just such a rough beginning Mm -hmm. that it makes it i think that much sweeter now because it's been a great product when you look at your time sitting on the customer advisory board coming to toast headquarters here in boston getting on the Zoom calls, meeting with executive leadership. What's your takeaways? Yeah, I mean, it's, there's two. I mean, obviously, you know, the chance to be connected with leaders at Toast is, like, phenomenal. Um, you know, you can't beat that um, to have that kind of access. But I would say I probably got more out of meeting you and other people who are like-minded or yeah. are going through the same pain points. Um you know, I didn't expect that. I think that's the pro- problem. I, yeah. I thought, oh yeah, I'm gonna get to talk to the toast folk. But really what's been so amazing is meeting other restaurant tours um, who have great ideas, are doing things differently, or they're doing things better or worse, or you know, just having that, um, those, those conversations, I think has been really what's been, uh, I think, the most beneficial. Because we can take that back and you know, implement it right away. Yeah, I think back to the micro community and the macro community. Toast is working really hard to build community. Yeah. You know, they're trying to work on how do we get people, like-minded people, not just in customer advisory positions, but people on the Toast website yeah. in the actual community app, you know, the 79,000 restaurants. And if you aren't on the app, how do, how do we connect? How do we do something good for the industry? Right. Because like you said, so much of what we do, we feel like we're in a silo. Yeah. We feel like we're fighting our own fights and that no one else has these problems. Yeah. I think for me, seeing that, understanding that my voice matters, it's not about my restaurant. It's just the fact that I'm willing and have the courage to share some feedback that is valuable feedback. Right, right. All of a sudden allows us the opportunity to, to sit where we sit. Yeah. I mean, and what's so crazy and going back to my first point of like, it was kind of user error that everything (laughs) was going wrong. Yes. Like the answer to most things is like, often it was user error so if you know the answer of something that I'm you know struggling with that's community because you've just fixed my you know you've fixed my problem today you know somebody else on cab came up to to me and one other person is like I have this issue this issue this issue you know we we talk through all three you know and I think that's the beautiful thing about the community that Toast is, is creating both here with us physically right now but like you said more importantly online we can help each other we can figure these things out together um you know nobody's in competition nobody's sitting here thinking oh you're a restaurant i'm a restaurant we're not going to help each other no it's building this incredible community of support um which like you said 
makes you not feel like you're just in your own little silo trying to figure things out on your own. When did you find your voice? Hmm. That's a great question. I mean, I don't want to give too much credit to Cab, but, <laughs> but um, I do think that, you know, this sort of space... Um, and interestingly, I would say like the first couple times I came and, you know, you guys were all like buddy, buddy. And I was like, oh, man, this <laughs> but is, like high school, you know, I was like, oh, the old boys network yeah. is here. And like and I was like, you, you know, wasn't quite sure how to, you know, navigate all of that. Um, but now, you know, now after a couple of times of just hanging out and really getting to understand other people's concepts, their restaurants, their, you know, their point of view. Um, you know, I, I really feel like, you know, having a voice, even when you see a feature request that you came up with, that's, that's somewhere else. So I'm going to give you my, my, my best um, example of voice. You might Please. probably already know this one, but um, so we've been on Toast for about uh, five years and um, obviously spending a lot of time on Toast support and they were playing the same song over and over and over again to the point where my daughter from like you know age like seven to 12 would be like oh you're talking to toast like clearly because she would hear <laughs> this you know this classical music in the background and I came to cab and as you know just chit-chatting I said you know what you guys you got to change the music like I, I can't <laughs> take it anymore I, I can't live like this you yeah know? and um, I said it here uh, you know a couple of really big wigs were in the room yep. And I kid you not, two weeks later, there was a new song. Amazing. And when <laughs> when I hear amazing. that song, I like do a little jig. Yeah. You know, like now when I call, you know, support, I'm like, that's my song. You know, um, that's, you know, that's influence. That's when <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Like that's the, that, that to me is an example. I mean, it's a silly example, but it is an example of the way in which Toast listens, you know? It's a, it's a magical example because as a company scales, it becomes harder and harder to do those things. That's why they're taking the time to invest in customer advisory boards and bringing in so many different voices. Right. You know, there are restaurants that are small restaurants. There's restaurants yeah. that are big restaurants yeah. and lots of different concepts in between. But it's a matter of are you just saying something just so that people can nod their heads or right. is something actually going to happen? And when I see things actually happen exactly. that we've discussed where they go, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, a quarter later, two quarters later, right. it's actually getting rolled out. Exactly. It's, it's a powerful thing. Yeah. For you and your position, you have had the fortune of doing so many cool things, getting interviewed by the Indeed CEO, putting on content for toast classroom content which mm. is phenomenal we're going to put links into that oh cool tell me about the training content and why why that was important for you to do that yeah i mean one of the things that happened both um we did an indeed commercial and then we did some training with toast um one of the things we're just talking about in both of those spaces is about like hiring with diversity and yeah. thinking about how to have an intentional community um, you know, I don't buy for one second that you can't find people of talent with all sorts of backgrounds. A Not for a you second. Know? And so I always want to challenge, you know, other restaurant tours and, and just in general, I want, you know, even challenge Toast and others to think about, like, how do we make sure we have all the different voices in the room? Um, and it can we can be talking about race. We can talk about class, gender, you know, tattooed or not tattooed, like whatever you want to talk about. Yeah. Um, you know, at Busboys, I often say, like, if you can smile, you can get a job here, right? So you can I smile, like you can start off as a host, right? Yeah. You get that one down, then you can become a server, then a bartender, and then a supervisor, then a manager, and then, a you know, a GM and yeah. VP, and then please take my job, right? Yes. You know, like, if all goes well. Um, and, you know, most of the VPs that I have on my staff, they started out as dishwashers or, you know, as hosts or, or wherever. Um, and, and I love that. I love that story that anybody can be sitting where we are you know if they have the opportunity now don't get me wrong lots of barriers in between um but i you know i grew up very fortunate i grew up very privileged um my parents poured into me um throughout my entire life and now i'm figuring out how do i give back you know how do i create a space where people really really want to work yes. and can grow you know and i think that's the interesting rub because it's like we have to make money, but we also want to make people whole. So how do we do both those things? It's definitely a challenge. I think, you know, for us, we're grateful that we have the opportunity to share our voice, share our stories, knowing that our voice stories 
our voice matters, your voice matters, and every restaurant that's out there that's struggling right. or that's succeeding, our voice matters. Yeah. You know, wherever you are, doesn't matter where you, where you are on, on earth, right. this stuff matters. And for us, we're just grateful and we're trying to also build community. If you come on Wednesday or Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific time on the social audio app Clubhouse, um, you can join us on stage. You can tell us about your restaurant. You can tell us if you're in sales, if you're in marketing, if you're a content creator. All of this stuff matters. Maybe one day you'll be sitting in Joy's seat sharing the story of your restaurant. Um, we'd like to do a social shout out. And this week's social shout out is going to go to Steve Fredette who is the co-founder of Toast. Uh, he does not need to sit in these meetings, yet he makes it a priority every single time that That's we great. come to Boston. He is sitting there taking vigorous notes. Yeah. Um, I couldn't be more impressed with not just him, but all of the leaders here at Toast for hosting us, but yeah. for giving us the opportunity to have this show, to share these stories. Who on your team? You can't give me the, th I can't be the entire team. Right, exactly. Who recently? 1,000 people. Who recently would you like to give a shout out? This is on Entrepreneur. This is going to be on the internet forever. Okay, all right. The pressure is on. The pressure um, is on. I'm going to shout out um, Ame, who is our VP of Human Resources. And um, I shout her out in part because she's a great example of what I was just talking about. She came in at a totally different level you know, she was sort of like a glorified secretary, even though that wasn't her job. That's like how she was pigeonholed mm -hmm. and she stuck with it. And she is such a powerhouse that like I literally would give her my job like tomorrow. Cause Amazing. She's, she's just so on top of everything. And again, she's all about that philosophy of how do we make this the best place to work? Like every single day we're spending all of our time figuring out how do we make it better? It's not there yet. But how do we make this a great place to work? People want to be here, you know, forever. I, I want it to be like the mafia. You can get yes. in, but you don't get back <laughs> out. I love it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So she's, I think, epitomizes what we're trying to do. And how can people interact with Busboys and Poets? Um, if you can go to busboysandpoets.com, there's all sorts of different ways. Like you said, our media is there. Our food is there. Um, our, our content is there. And every single event that we have coming up is also listed. And we can look forward to the YouTube channel. Ugh, the pressure is on. The pressure uh, is on now. <laughs> I'm gonna. Tr I'm gonna. I can't promise you anything, but. Um, but so I'm just remember for everybody, and that's the audience included. But storytelling on on the internet's easy. It's just audio, video, words, and images. We right. tend to overthink how hard it is and what needs to go into right. it. You guys already have everything that you need to All launch right. an incredible. You have you have the stage. All right, I'm going to hire you to, um, <laughs> to take this to the next level. But I do, I love the idea. Yeah. Well, we appreciate that. And if you guys want to interact with me, it's at Sean P. Walchef, S H A W N P W A L C H E F. Joy, how can people get in touch with you? What's the best way? Um, I guess the best way is just joy at busboysandpoets.com. I, you know, I'm on You're my. You're posting computer. content on LinkedIn? I am not. Maybe I will. Now though. she will. Oh my gosh. You, the now, pressure. see? Now it's, now it's on the internet forever. <gasps> Okay. Joy, Joy's it. voice will, will, be on, will be on LinkedIn. It's happening. I know you're on Twitter. I am. What's your Twitter handle? Oh, it's just Joy of Parenting because I love being a parent. So um, it's, it, for the longest time, it was just content about my kid. That's, that's a beautiful yeah, thing. That's all it was. Well, yeah. Joy, thank you so much. Thank you. It's truly an Appreciate honor. You. Can't wait to come personally to come see uh, what you guys are building. All right. Please do. Thank, thank you, you, guys. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll catch you all next week. Thank you for listening to Restaurant Influencers. The best way that you can help us with the show is to subscribe and write a review. We love the opportunity to connect with you no matter where you are on the globe, no matter what restaurant you are running. Please send us a DM on social at Sean P. Walchef. If you are interested in toast, if you want to improve your digital hospitality, please send me a DM. I will get you in touch with a local toast representative. We appreciate you listening to this show. The best way that you can help the show is share it with a friend and we will catch you all next week or we will see you on one of the digital playgrounds that we call social media.